This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including DeGracia A. Daniels, Erwin Stur, Ken Hayes, and our new patron, Travis. Welcome, Travis. On this episode of DTNS, uh, DTNS, when home security cameras aren't in fact secure, <laughs> what happens? Amazon will let you know if AI wrote your next favorite book and the weirdest thing that you will see in Target ever. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, September 11th, 2023. From Studio Salon, I'm Sarah Lane. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chen. All right. We are talking about all the things today. Uh, you know, the next book that you buy on Amazon might be written by AI, <laughs> might not, but you're going to know. But first, before we get to any of that, let's start with the quick hits. Qualcomm announced on Monday that Apple will buy its modem semiconductors for three more years. That's extending an agreement that was set to end this year. Good news for Qualcomm because Apple is Qualcomm's largest uh, customer and according to Bloomberg makes up almost a quarter of Qualcomm's overall revenue. At its 2023 Roblox Developers Conference last week, Roblox announced new AI tools to help creators make experiences more easily. The Roblox Assistant, as it's called, is an extension of previously announced features that will help build virtual assets and write code by typing in prompts to do things like generating virtual environments. An example Roblox used for this is typing, quote, I want to make a game set in ancient ruins. Make the player spawn by a campfire in the ruins. Add some trees for the player to chop down. End quote. Roblox also announced that it will be available on the PlayStation 4 and 5 starting in October. Spooky. Ancient ruins everywhere with trees to chop down. I mean, that was only one example, but uh, sounds yeah. fun. Reuters sources say Sweden-based Embracer, Embracer owns Gearbox Entertainment, is exploring a sale of... Gearbox Entertainment, which is a U.S. game developer that you might know of because it is the owner of the Tomb Raider franchise, as well as Borderlands, uh, well known. Back in June, Embracer announced a restructuring, uh, including studio closures, cancel projects, and layoffs, so this may be a way to further cut costs. Pretty good IP. You got to wonder where it's going to land. Instacart filed for an IPO Monday with a target of up to 93 Billion in valuation. Instacart said it hopes to raise up to six hundred and sixteen million by offering twenty-two million shares, priced between twenty-six and twenty-eight dollars each. In a move seen as unusual, some investors have agreed to buy up to four hundred million dollars worth of shares sold in the offering, which would make up almost two-thirds of the total proceeds at the top of the price range. Almost as if it's still private while going. Yeah. Interessante. Mm. The Wall Street Journal sources say that Meta is working on a new artificial intelligence system designed to be as powerful as OpenAI's chat GPT, or at least the company hopes so. Meta reportedly hopes its model will be ready by next year at some point and uh, designed to be several times more powerful than Llama 2, which you might remember is the model that released it released just two short months ago. Meta is all in on AI. And those are the quick hits. All right, let's talk about writing books and who should. <laughs> After complaints from groups uh, such as the Authors Guild, but not the only group, Amazon has started requiring writers who want to sell books through Amazon's ebook program to disclose if their work includes artificial intelligence material. The Authors Guild says the new regulations posted last week are a welcome first step towards keeping a handle on AI generated books on the platform saying that it thanks, quote, the Amazon team for taking our concerns into account and enacting this important step towards ensuring transparency and accountability for AI-generated content. Boy, Justin, if all the guilds and the, you know, big old conglomerates mm -hmm. could uh, work as nicely as, as, <laughs> as these two have. But how do we feel about AI-generated book content in general? I'm not sure how much I would care uh if it was a good book but i you know i think disclosure is probably the right call 
Well, here's the bigger problem for Amazon and eBooks. And first, let's understand their scenario before we delve into what AI does to it. Amazon is the unquestioned king of this market. Not yeah. only do they have the biggest library, they have a relationship with customers that they have built for as long as Amazon has been a company. And ebook readers are voracious. These are sometimes multiple book a day readers that uh, are, are largely also co consumers to Amazon by way of their Kindle products. Mm -hmm. All that being said, Part of what makes that relationship strong is Amazon's recommendation engine. When Amazon recommends something, ebook consumers very often take them up on it. What Amazon does not want is a infinite flooding of their market by way of AI writing. Things that are not necessarily great, but are gameable to a point where it will sell X amount of copies and people can essentially make money by chumming up the waters for ebooks one might say that it's already hit elements of saturation up till now imagine what happens when infinite books happen into that store infinitely and so because of that amazon has actually been pretty punitive about fully ai generated books for a while now and in fact to my knowledge they still don't allow fully ai generated books right and we're living in the world of 2023 for which AI is very helpful for writing. And you can understand that if you're an author and you're writing at the speed of some of these ebook authors, maybe a little help here and again, even if it's just for helping out uh, uh, the story or grammar, you might want to use AI. And so essentially what they want to do is just continue to monitor and make people disclose certain things because eventually we're going to get to a point where these AI models are good enough that they can rip out books that are good for the readers. And when that happens, Amazon has a whole new different problem on their hands. hundred percent. And, you know, never been a novel uh, fiction or nonfiction publisher myself. I can say if it's good, it's good. Who cares? Now, if you're an author, you don't necessarily feel at all the same way that I do. Uh, when I think about Amazon in general and the idea of AI and, you know, maybe promoting products that aren't that great and, you know, fake reviews and just sort of a gamification of the system in general, I think that's a lot harder, at least for me, as a as somebody who buys things and, and by and large the same things over and over on Amazon. You know, I still will just like get some like rando company that's selling some, I don't know, eye masks. And, you know, I, yeah. I don't care all that much about, you know, how good they are, how well they're made. But if I, you know, get burned once, I won't come back. But yeah. when you're an author, you know, there's so much more at stake, right? If you're an author that puts out, let's just, let's just say AI generated book, that's just a bunch of hot garbage. Yeah. Um, it's not just that people will say that was a bad book. It's that that's a bad author. So sure, yeah. I guess you could change your name and, you know, game the system that much farther, but only to a certain point. Well, we often with any kind of future technology tend to think that the future is just the present, but slightly larger. And so all the examples that you gave were are essentially just making the lives of people that are already game systems easier, of which it will almost assuredly do. But there are already safeguards for that kind of behavior. What I really think is going to be existentially cataclysmic for the relationships of authors uh, who have found the ebook store to be a lifeline for middle class writers and the future of AI is going to be the point where they need to decide, am I an AI prompt engineer that sews things together or maybe even doesn't because the token limit will get so high? Or am I still going to be writing and handcrafting these things? And will the audience give a rat's patoot? Mm -hmm. uh, before we move on, uh, just a note, the U.S. Copyright Office, again, rejected copyright protection for art created using AI. The specific case was a request by artist Jason M. Allen, which was denied uh, due to a copyright covering an award-winning image that he created with the generative AI system Mid Journey. Allen had argued, I put in 
over 600 prompts. This was definitely me as a human's work. Uh, the U.S. Copyright Office did not agree. All right, Justin, let's talk about uh, everyone's worst nightmare. Well, all the smart people that listen to this show, I'm sure you might have some of these friends of yours that think that you're being over dramatic about privacy. Well, I want you to find them. And I want you to tell them to their face or via text the following story. Friday, some wise security camera owners noted on Reddit that they were able to see webcam feeds that weren't their own. A wise spokesperson <sighs> tells The Verge that this was indeed an error and was due to a web caching issue, noting that the page in question was, quote, currently under maintenance and that, quote, we are working on this and we'll update you when it's available again. Yeah, so after The Verge published the story uh, originally, Wise spokesperson Dave Crosby um, told the publication, quote, this was a web caching, caching issue and is now resolved. For about 30 minutes this afternoon, a small number of users who used a web browser to log into their camera on view.wise.com, that's W-I-Z-E, may have seen cameras of other users who may also have been logged in through view.wise.com during that time frame. This issue did not affect the Wise app or users that did not log into view.wise.com during that time period. Okay. Well, this is definitely the company saying small number of users. Many of you, yeah. you know, are using the apps or just weren't active during this time. But it just takes the one. Just takes the one. Well, you know, this gets to, uh, I, I think, a natural point that we were going to eventually land at after two decades of extraordinarily cheap manufacturing. And I don't mean to say that that's a negative thing. In fact, I want it to be a positive thing. That mm -hmm. as we have created web services and hardware in a match, that is more and more affordable. Number one, more people can understand the benefits that technology can give them. But we've also grown faster than I think our expectation for security and reputation of companies should be. I foresee a world where, you know, Apple has spent a lot of time, love or hate them, Apple spent a lot of time saying security is a priority for us. We are going to eschew money on advertising so we can protect your security. We are going to make big public fights and lines in the sand with the government based on the idea that we will have a secure device for you. That matters to us, especially as you are going to pay a higher price for their products. Wise, for example, and I have a wise scale, so everybody will be able to know that I weighed in at 167 pounds this morning. Uh, and probably even the trend line of where my body fat percentage is. 167, look at you trim, man. I mean, hey, hey, hey. Just uh, 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 although the body fat percentage is going in the wrong direction. All that aside, <laughs> uh, uh, this is something for which I bought because it was cheap and not necessarily cheap, but mid budget. I can see a world where reputation is really going to matter. And it's not just going to matter based on hacks or on mistakes like this. It's going to be based on the hierarchy and and the decision that the decision that they have made from an organizational level on up on how to protect this data, because that's going to matter a lot more going forward than simply the ability to get a cheap camera or get a cheap light bulb or get a cheap scale. That's always going to be available, but I, I do think it's going to become more of a common talking point how serious they're taking care of your data. Yeah, I'm I'm not I know our audience would know, but I'm not sure how much the average wise user of a variety of uh of, of products that are designed to be private, uh unless you want them to be uh shared with other people, um how many people are going to be outraged over this. When I saw this story, I was like, I mean, this is this is the worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario for any company that is supposed to uh, let you be able to check in on your house or check in on your pets or your family members or, you know, your whatever. Your child, your baby. Anything. Um, yeah. and, and somehow someone else is like, I saw your mom in your living room in her underwear. Like, and it doesn't even have to be like, ooh, I saw something that's like really sensitive. That's not the point. 
Uh, the no. point is, is that you, you know, have an expectation that something like this would not happen. A web caching issue, uh, you know, the company didn't do it on purpose, but that is a really big fail. And, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't buy a wise camera after this. It, 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 it's an organizational thing, and and that's something that. But when I say that people are going to be more aware of it, I would expect it to be mentioned in places like Wire Cutter or something like that. Mm. Very public facing, consumer friendly uh, elements. If you're going to talk about trade offs, it's not just going to be a hardware thing. It will also be, hey, this company has a history of not securing data. Well, um, what has a history of securing our hearts and minds mm. is video games. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, if you want to know what Tom Merritt thinks about video games, especially video games of the past, you should watch the latest Tom's Top 5, the show where Tom breaks down the five top things he thinks you need to know about technology. And the latest episode, Tom lists the top five oddball video game consoles ever made. Mm -hmm. From triangle-shaped consoles to the one that induces nausea. Hmm. I don't know. Fun for some. Learn about all of them at youtube.com slash daily tech news show. All right, Justin, let's talk about the DMA. That is the European Union's Digital Markets Act. That is, uh, set, I know, <laughs> you just, the moment we've all been waiting for, set to <laughs> impose strict rules on big tech companies that will have to provide interoperability to let users communicate with each other using different apps. Uh, Meta owned WhatsApp in the news today because it is considered a gatekeeper by the DMA, thus must comply with the DMA. And the latest WhatsApp beta for Android 2.23.19.8 update shows that even though it's sort of a it's a, a big nothing right now, at least for people who code can see, ah, WhatsApp is already working on solutions for new regulations. Although WhatsApp has six months to do so. What the idea eventually will be is, let's say I uh, send you something, Justin, using the Signal app. You're a WhatsApp user. I am not. I would be able to send you that message in our operability. Yeah. Uh, so thoughts here. Um, you know, the EU is always doing something crazy, right? Uh, can I be an old man here, Sarah? You're going to. You're gonna I'm be. Gonna, I, I, I know. I just performatively asked for permission. I'm gonna do it. Uh, <laughs> do we really? Said no, you must. I would have run over you because that's another old man thing to do is sure. to run over people after asking a rhetorical question. <laughs> do we really want these apps to be communicating with each other? Because I, I, I do. Why? Well, because that would mean less work on my end. And listen, I am. I am like, not under like the impression not that little... somebody on I'm not under the impression that somebody on Facebook Messenger thinks that I should you know send a response on iMessage, you know, iOS uh, um iMessage and it uh, for it to work. But that would be cool. I mean, but these brands mean something to me. My messages app are for friends and family and people who wrote down my number the one time that I, uh, on a dare, published it on the internet. <laughs> the signal is all my security friends and uh, a few of my more paranoid family members. Telegram and WhatsApp are, by yeah. and large, international friends of mine uh -huh. that I have uh -huh. uh, been lucky enough to make. And I like that. I go to different digital neighborhoods. I have different conversations. If everything became one big slosh, then I wouldn't care about them in the way that I care about these conversations now. So I'm sure that this is probably a shifting opinion and maybe Gen Z wants everything to be in one big pile. But for me, I, I like, you know, I'm going to channel the offspring. You got to keep them separated. Well, well, I don't think you're going to, not in the EU anyway, uh, really? unless you want some some pretty hefty fines. I mean, I, this I know what you're saying, and I totally agree with you. Like my Facebook Messenger crew, and they're lovely. If anyone's yeah. out there, love love you. Um, but you're a 
certain area of my life. <laughs> my Telegram people are a little bit different. Yes. Uh, my WeChat people, boy, are they different. Um, and uh -huh. that, but that doesn't really say anything about the companies. It says something about the people who are using this stuff. I mean, this reminds me of something like Trillion. Where, yeah. you know, it, it was AOL Instant Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, I, ICQ, like whoever, yeah. just dump it all in there. And then you've got like this fun way to chat with a bunch of people. That's what I, I think as a user, I get out of this. I mean, obviously, I understand what the EU is doing um, to say like, hey, you're too big and now you must fail. And, well, you know, yeah, start exactly. playing nicely with others. Well, I think it's the EU making work for themselves and, and making decisions whether or not the customer base really wants it. it. That's the other thing is that all these things are free by and large. Yeah. Aside from, you know, uh, uh, Apple's Messenger app, which obviously you need to have an Apple device. So there is a gate there that you have to pay to enter. In general, these are all apps that if you have a phone, you can download them. You can create different accounts for, for each of them. I, I just... I don't see the customer need for it because for my, my consumer uh, drive does not want it. If the, if these apps wanted to work together, then I think they would find a reason to do it. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like being able to, to, to separate my conversations into different apps. It's just, yeah. it, it works at the, at, for me. at the same time, you know, and I, I hate to be like, well, what about, you know, your grandmother kind of thing? Because lots of people in our lives uh, have different. Or your grandfather. I got sure. you. I mean, I don't even have any grandparents anymore. They, they're they long gone. But uh, <laughs> somebody in my life who is who is not super, you know, tech savvy um, yeah. for me to kind of set up something for them and say, here, all you have to do is hang out in one place. That's great. But that's actually not what the European Union cares about in this sense. That's well, because they we're, have we're not place. thinking it's about the untech savvy people in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, this this feels like an application of other EU law that I don't know if it fits here. But you know, but maybe uh, we can set up a little Telegram uh, group uh, complaining about EU regulations, and then eventually we'll be able to infect every other app. I would prefer Signal, Justin, but okay, you got it. Let's let's do that. All right. I, I'm just going to read uh, this next description about a product from Target, uh, U.S. national chain, beloved, love Target. Uh, <clears throat> quote, inspired by the most influential gaming console of its time, this collector building set celebrates the legacy of the Xbox 360. Jump back in with a fully buildable light-up console and controller. The console opens to reveal a disk drive and other Easter eggs. Place the Halo 3 themed disk inside to activate the motherboard. Adult builders take note. Completing the set unlocks the ultimate achievement. Okay, sounds kind of fun. Question, question. Would you know that this is not, in fact, an Xbox 360 if you bought it because it costs the same amount as an Xbox 360, <laughs> more or less? Um, this is a, a remarkable moment in history where adults totally run the toy market <laughs> kids don't want toys aside from really really young ones they want them less and less they want screen time they want to interact with their roblox virtual assistant so they can make a game featuring ruins and three trees where you spawn next to the campfire that's what they want and so the toy market having existed for oh so many years have realized that the people that are buying their stuff are adults adults who want to remember the time that they were children and guess what there's an entire generation that are collecting big boy and girl paychecks that are ready to rebuild among their first consoles, the Xbox 360. So for them, I'm sure it is great. They're going to have a really, really good time. And I hope the ultimate achievement is a red ring of death. <laughs> well, OK, so when I first saw this, uh, this, uh, this item, the ultimate achievement, I was like, oh, and then it works. Mm. And it's an Xbox 360. Mm. And I actually sent this around. This is like, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, you know, to friends of mine. And I was like, am I dumb or am I missing something here? And they were like, no, man, this is like Lego stuff. 
This is not yeah. an Xbox 360. <laughs> No, and and but by the way, someone's going to buy it and think it's like drastically, you know, reduced. I, I and don't think so. Be mad. I think that they know exactly what they're doing, and as Roger is putting in our chat here, pre-orders are sold out for this. Oh yeah, so it is already extraordinarily popular. Uh, uh, and I say, you know, for people that grew up playing with Legos and. Yeah, and I'm playing Halo 3. Hey, you know, the snow days are right around the corner, everybody. You get that. You get you that get and you it. build that. I mean, I will say, you know, uh, iPods were something that were very, very important to my college years, my late uh, 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 or my, mm -hmm. my yeah, college years. No. And so, no. like, I went back when I got to a certain buying power. I just bought old iPad, uh, iPods. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. I, I, I always, like, uh, uh, fancy a world where I'll make a little art installation with them. I have no idea. I just like to remember that time that How I owned those do you iPods. Have? I, I bought one and then I started mentioning oh, that I wanted I thought, them. Like, I started, imagine like 25 or something. People started sending me their old iPods. Oh. And so now I have probably 10 or 11. Oh, you know what? Installation time. That'll be fun. I know. I know. Yeah. But hey, if anybody uh, either has bought uh, the uh, Xbox 360 uh, kit, uh, set, the mod, the mod set, um, or really, really, really has a great thought about uh, why this is so fun, even though it won't play any actual games, do send us an email, feedback at dailytechnewshow.com. We would love to know more. Speaking of emails, uh, Kirill wrote in about our combo Last Thursday, uh, that was around BMW scrapping its heated seat subscription model, saying uh, no one liked that, and we are <laughs> not going to do that anymore. Knock it off. Yeah, but Kirill said, this is kind of like software licenses, right? He says, do you remember the days when software came on multiple CDs or DVDs, and then you had to enter a license key to unlock some of the features? Let's say you have a disc with home, professional, and enterprise versions of Windows. You can't say, but the enterprise version is already on the disc. Why can't I use it? Same thing with maybe Adobe Corel products, where they may give you a disc with all of their products, but your license may unlock only some of them. Corel says, maybe BMW is considering itself a software company in this regard, spending lots of time and money in research and development to create a product, now licensing to others the right to use some or all of those features. It's not a bad analogy, but hardware matters psychologically differently in the minds of the consumer. And that's where I think you find the pushback, especially at a luxury status symbol item like BMW. When you are mm -hmm. spending BMW money, you want to feel like a BMW owner. You don't want to feel like a middle class BMW owner who has a cold butt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I... I get where you're going with here, Kirill. Uh, and there are definitely some comparisons to be had. But yeah, when you're like, but the software to heat the seats is already installed <laughs> in it's this like, car like, that I am sitting in right now and I pay monthly for, you know, it's a, and, it's a, it's a tough sell. And it's like, if I wanted to save money, I could buy a tricked out luxury Hyundai for probably less than what you paid for the BMW and your butt would be toasty warm because toasty they don't warm. do that. Yeah. Or even cool. Ooh, you know, the cars who have the cool ones. Oh, oh I used tell to you have what, that on my summer. sob. Oh, delightful. Uh, an absolute delight. Makes you want to wear shorts again uh, in a car. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> just remember, Young, uh, thank you, whether you wear shorts or not, uh, for being with us today. Let folks know where they can keep up with your latest. Uh, like John Stockton. They're way past mid-thigh. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have uh, one thing to do if you have not already done it, and that's listen to the season premiere of Know A Little More on this season of Know A Little More, we are going to dive into every little nook and cranny of the mother of all demos. 1968, demonstrating much of the technology that we use in our modern world, including hypertext, the mouse, uh, video conferencing. Why did it take over a decade for these technologies to go mainstream? We go piece by piece, including in the premiere, the demo itself, the fact that the mother of all demos literally gave birth 
to the Apple, Google, and Microsoft demos that we know and love today. It's Know A Little More with Tom Merritt. Well, we're so happy to have you on the show with us. Uh, patrons, you know who you are, but we'd like to shout you out and just say, hi, we really appreciate you. Do stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. Would you sign up for a credit card from a video game company? You might already sign up for a credit card versus, you know, uh, depending on certain platforms. So we're going to discuss Xbox's latest move to broaden its brand to credit cards. But just a reminder, you can get the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back again tomorrow. Kind of a ho-hum day. Wonderlust. <laughs> Apple announcement. I'm just kidding. It's going to be a big one. The Snobos team will be joining us. Nika Monford and Terrence Gaines will be joining us. Don't miss it. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>